Hey guys, this is Veron from Speaker of the Stars, and welcome back to my channel. So today, as you can see in that sketch thumbnail over there on the left, we are doing Mordred from the Knights of the Round Table. So if you're not familiar with my channel, I've been doing fan art for the Knights of the Round Table since last year. Um, I had to pause it for a while because I have stuck with Lancelot, but now I am trying to bulldoze through all of them because... As of recording, Camelot's gonna release very, very soon. It's already been announced in the game. When I checked the dates, like, the advanced banner notices there, so like, ah, I still have to do like two or three more nights, and like, ah. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll be able to finish everyone by the time Camelot releases, but I want at least more dread to be done by the time it releases. So, um, if you don't know what I've been talking about, uh, more dread is a servant that you meet in Fate Apocrypha. She is the Saber of Red, and you should just watch it. It's not the best Fate franchise, but it's pretty good. Uh, Mordred's admittedly a pretty cool character. Uh, a lot of daddy, daddy issues, but eh, she's fine. So, if you're also not familiar with that, uh, Mordred is the supposedly the son of King Arthur, who ends up betraying him, or in the fake universe, her. So she betrays um, Arthur uh, by trying to take over the throne when he was away trying to fight someone? Romans? I'm not sure. I should check. <laughs> anyway, while Arthur was away waging war, Mordred comes in and tries to stir up some rebellion, uh, takes the throne for quite a bit. And when Arthur comes back, it's like, oh, why? What happened? What the heck? So they try to fight for over the throne, and supposedly Mordred uh, does mortal damage to Arthur, even though she herself was killed by Arthur using a lance. And that is Mordred's story. So she is summoned in Fate Apocrypha as the saber, as I mentioned, and we follow her there uh, only to learn, or... Not really only, but we learned there that she has some daddy issues. And if you're familiar with her fate lore, uh, you kind of get it. So, Mordred reappears in Fate Grand Order. She first reappears in London, the London chapter. Um, yeah, pretty okay. I tried to roll for her, she didn't come home. So I guess I don't have Mordred yet. <laughs> so the Kamala chapter is releasing soon, which will feature, obviously, the Knights of the Round Table, and Arthur, or Artoria, or Altria. I call her Artoria technically, but localization. But yeah, um, Mordred's fan art is a bit more, uh, how do I put this? It's a bit more dynamic than the rest of the knights. Um, if you watch Mordred in Apocrypha, she's a very lively, hot tempered, uh, go getting type of character. So, I felt the more static, flowy vibe that the rest of the knights have don't exactly fit Mordred. Um, yeah. So you'll see later, I would really put a lot of that energy into the background. Um, right now, it's just, you know, sort of a battle pose. Mordred's almost always willing to fight. <laughs> so it's a standard battle pose. Um, I wasn't really sure how to go about her armor at first. It was really complicated. There's a lot of details, a lot of parts that overlap and intersect. Uh, it took me quite some time. I had to have the sprite, the, the Grand Order sprite up, and I also had her character card up the entire time when I was doing the armor, just to see if I could, you know, try and get it right. In the end, I had more difficulty with the sword, apparently, because of the shape. It was weird, and I can't draw symmetric stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So we are using two watercolor palettes here. We are using the Sakura Koi watercolors, which you are seeing right now. And we are also using the Pima Confections watercolor palette uh, in the shade complexion. So I used that for a skin. I started with a nice pink lemonade just to give a, a peachy vibe and peachy? No, more like a pink, a pink vibe or a pink over to, uh, undertone. My words are not with me today, dang it. Anyway, um, yeah, so... Uh, oh, right. There's something interesting about this today, though you don't really see it a lot. 
But I usually do use the Sakura Micron Pigma pens as my main line art pens. For me, they're really nice and fluid and... No, not fluid. They're really smooth. So it's really easy for me to work with them. But recently, I saw, I think on YouTube, like another artist YouTuber introduced the Sakura Micron Pigma pen. But it wasn't a brush tip or it wasn't the normal, um, like the normal point nib type tip. Instead, it had the, it had the abbreviation PN. I guess it means pen. Uh, it has a plastic nib. Or, oh yeah, it's not pen. It's plastic nib. Come on, Veron. Where is your bane? Did I even have one in the first place? Who the hell knows? Um, it's, I guess it's meant, it's, it means plastic nib. And as it, you know, suggests, it has a plastic nib, but it's not really a fine point nib. It's meant to act a little bit like the brush pen, but it has a bit more, no, not a bit, it has a ton more consistency than it. So if you want to consistently have a certain weight, it's a bit easier to achieve that, especially for someone like me who naturally um, keeps the weight consistent. But you can also do the, the you know, really varied output. And I think it's pretty cool. I got one in sepia, which turns out to be really nice for drawings. I've seen a lot of people use sepia before, but I think when I bought my microns, the sepia set wasn't really available back then. Or it had like the 0.5, but I wanted the thinner tips, so I got the standard black set. But I'm starting to fall in love with the sepia set, to be honest. So I might use it a bit more. I'll still use the black. I don't want to waste it. But I feel... I'm falling in love with the sepia set. Also, as you can see, that huge time skip just now, it was because I was a complete idiot. It's completely my fault. I lost the entire footage of me doing her sword, her cloth, loincloth part, her armor, um, all the details. So I'm. it happened because like I thought it was recording because so the screen was on the entire time. But it ended up, the app, I'm using frame lapse. It turned it ended up that the app was just open, but I didn't really hit record. And I thought it was recording the entire time, even when I checked, because the screen was on. The app keeps your screen on. So I didn't record it apparently. So I'm going over some of the parts of the armor since I really do it in layers to add up like the build up the shadows and stuff like that. Did you miss a lot? Uh not super. I mean I do go over them a bit, but you know, it's not the full process. And I think the most interesting part of this entire video would be this part, would be the background. Um, the background, I fell in, I really love how I did it. I hope, or rather, I wished I did more red to it. But I think I was a bit scared that it would blend too much with her armor. So I just ended up with orange. Actually, I haven't really given my thoughts on Moba Jed <laughs> or more Jed. Uh... As a character, I don't really mind Marjad. I don't hate her. I don't super... I'm... When I say I love Marjad, not as much as other people. Like, if I had to choose, I'd still choose Okita. <laughs> Among the saber faces. Uh, but Marjad, I thought I would hate Marjad because like, I thought she's a brat and like just has too many daddy issues and stuff like that. But I don't really hate Marjad. I actually do like Marjad quite a bit. Um... At the start of Apocrypha, I remember me and like a friend, we were asking, he, like he asked me like, oh, which which saber do you like, saber of black or saber of red? And I chose black because I liked Siegfried and I've had Siegfried since Fate Grand Order, so I had the, that bias towards Siegfried and his like sort of meek personality. Um, but by the end of Apocrypha, I love Mordred a bit more now. <laughs> so, I hope I get... Yeah, I'll probably get Mordred sometime. She'll probably come home sometime. I'm already pretty salty because I didn't get Minamoto no Raiko from the Onigashima, Onigashima event. I got her in Japanese, but I'm so far I haven't been able to get her in English. I think there's a day or two left before it ends, at least as of recording. Um, will I get Minamoto no Raiko? Probably not. <laughs> Let's just hope my luck is better when the Valentine's event rolls out because I desperately want Arthur. But enough about that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. 
I had a lot of fun doing this piece, to be honest. I experimented quite a bit with the colors, and I didn't really know how it would turn out. But I think it's a bit interesting. It's not as super dynamic as some of the other pieces, but there's a lot more energy to it. And I'm happy how it turned out. So, if you like this kind of content, please do like and maybe even subscribe. I do a lot of traditional art, digital art. I do fan art, I do original stuff. I just do like arty things in general. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, follow me on the social media just to see rips and stuff, and I'll see you around.